Hello Math 7 students, this is Utah Middle School Math Project 1.1a, Using Data to Make Predictions. This is part two. Part one, we just collected data, and part two, now we're going to analyze that data. Uh, so only watch this video if you have already performed your experiment or at least copied down all of the data from the last video. Let's go ahead and get started. Probability has the standard notation of P of something. So we write, as it says here, and I'm going to highlight, maybe, we write P parentheses something. What did we have G? What did our G represent throughout this whole experiment? Joshua? Green. So P parentheses G means the probability of drawing a green tile. So again, P of G, we say probability of, and then whatever is in parentheses, that's what we say, the probability of drawing a green. That's what that means. But this is what we say. To write the probability of green, we need to know the observed frequency and the total number of trials. That's the data that we collected. The observed frequency is how many times we observed the thing happening. So specific to, and I'm going to jump to this one because that's where the data is, specific to this, I observed 25 green, green tiles drawn out of how many total draws for this particular experiment? 30 draws. So that's how I will find that probability, 25 out of 30. Now, what you're going to do is for each of your experiments, you are going to find the probability of green, and you're going to list it here. I've already got three of them taken care of. I just found part E, that was 25 out of 30. And notice that there's a second blank space. That is because we're going to take that fraction and we are going to turn it into a decimal. You have calculators, so you can simply divide it in your calculator to get that decimal approximation. Uh, one thing that's probably worth mentioning, it was kind of squeezed in here in a weird, awkward place, but this is a part to whole relationship. Tying it back into a previous lesson, previous unit actually, this is a part to whole relationship. The whole amount is the total number of times I drew out of the bag and the part is how many times I saw green tiles. So this is a part to whole relationship relating it to those uh, previous lessons. So we're going to pause the recording as students take the time to get their calculations, uh, calculate their observed frequency divided by the total number of trials in both fraction and decimal form. We're going to pause the recording now. Ready, set, go. Okay, now that we have each of those calculated, we're going to make a graph. This graph is going to look a little bit, um, let me just say it's not going to be proportional. We've really only focused a lot on proportional graphs, and this is not going to be a graph of a proportional relationship. But here's what you need to be seeing. This on the x-axis, as it says, is the number of draws. So you can see it's already been scaled for us. We drew 6 times, 12 times, 8 times, 24 times, and 30 times. So when I drew 6 times, that was experiment A, what was the probability of green? That is listed right here in part A. So I am going to draw that, for me at least, that was right up here at 1. So 1 up here. Nope, I'm sorry, wrong spot. That was not 0 draws, that would be six draws right there. The next time was 12 draws. At 12 draws, I had the probability of 0 0.916. Now, do I know exactly where 0 0.916 is going to be? No, but I need to be able to estimate and understand that if this is 0.5, then smack dab in the middle is going to be 0 0.75. And maybe based on that, I can start figuring out where the 0 0.6 would be where the 0.7 would be, and I can just kind of estimate. It's not going to be perfect. It does not need to be perfect. I'm going to estimate that 0.916 repeating is approximately here. The next one, 18 draws, I had a probability of 0.7. So again, estimating where that's going to be, I'm going to say that's probably right here-ish. 0.7 over bar, not 0 0.7, 0 0.7 over bar is going to be more than three quarters. So about here. 
you're going to continue on doing this for your own data. Don't copy what I have on the screen because I probably have different uh, numbers than you do. But see if you can plot those points. All right, I have now taken pictures of other groups data within class. Um, let's just compare the two that you can see on the screen right now. Here's my data. Um, here's this group's data. Uh, what would you say about the two different graphs that we have? Just turn and talk to your groups. What are some things that you notice? What are some conclusions that you'd like to make? Why are they so different? Go ahead and talk with your groups. I'm going to pause the recording. Okay, uh, what are some things that you would say about these two graphs? Did I do it wrong? Or did they do it wrong? What do you think, Trace? Yeah, it's almost the opposite of what mine was. Yeah, isn't that really interesting? Uh, Luke? Okay, I'm going to repeat that for the video. They had a lower probability of getting green. They didn't do it wrong. They just had a lower probability of getting green. Why? Why do you make that conclusion that this group had a lower probability of getting green? Tell me why you think that. Kind of like mine. High probability of getting green, so it's really high up here. Okay. Okay. So to summarize for the recording, the higher the probability, the more likely you are to get green, and the lower the probability, the less likely you are to get green. Okay. Any other thoughts? Any other comments? Yes, Joshua? Okay, and we'll get to your group in just a second. So here's what I would like to say about this. Could you use this data to predict how many greens were here? Like actual greens in the bag? Could you use it to predict how many greens were in the bag here? Do you think we have the same number of greens in our bag? Probably not. Okay, uh, let's take a look. And again, I can't compare all at the same time. They're just too big. Uh, let's just look at these two that are visible that we can see. Uh, one comment that I do want to make, this group connected their lines. Um, this is going to be something that we talk about more next year, and we've addressed briefly, but when we connect uh, data points with a line, that means that we're assuming the data in between is, ac is also accurate. For example, if we would have drawn uh, eight times, then it would be that probability. If we would have drawn seven times, it would have been that probability. Um, and so we want to be careful about connecting those lines just because we don't know what that data is like. Our all of our uh, lessons previous to this, we have felt it was okay to connect those dots, but now that we're in statistics, we don't always want to do that. Um, this group erased it after I made that comment, this group kept it. Just keep that in mind that we don't want to make any assumptions about the data that we haven't drawn yet, so we don't want to draw those lines. Um, so don't worry about the lines. Not talking about the lines, what are some things that you notice about these two graphs? What do you notice? Pausing the recording again so students can discuss. Uh, you know what? Actually, I'm going to squeeze that one in. Let's do all three of them all together. We can see what we need to see at least. All three. Pause the recording now. All right. What are some things that you would say? What do you notice? What do you want to say about these? I want to call on someone besides the students that I've already heard from. Thank you, Sophie. Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was interesting too. I also had not a spike necessarily, but a dip. This group had a spike as well, and I think that was kind of interesting. But yeah, they have that same general format almost. Um, would you say <clears throat> would you say that the probability is the same for each one? Which one do you think has more greens in it? Which one has more greens in it? Gideon? The one with what? This one? Yeah, I agree. I think that this one probably has more green in it based on what we see. 
Any other conclusions? Any other thoughts? Joshua? Yeah. Yeah, the majority, uh, at least on these three, the majority are all less than half. Right? So, based on that, how many greens do you think they have? The probability is less than half for the majority, you know? What do you think? Six, six tiles? Do you think they probably have six tiles that are green? Probably fewer than that, right? Okay, really good. Now, here's what we're going to do next. Explain what, uh, what your graph shows about the probability of green tiles. We've discussed about a lot of different students or groups' graphs. Now, write down your responses. Explain what your graph shows about the probability of green tiles. Uh, specific to mine, I have a very high probability of green tiles. So what does that mean? There's probably a lot of green tiles. Again, you're not going to want to be copying everything that I'm writing if it doesn't apply to you. We had different data sets, so you need to interpret your own data. The next one, turn and tell your neighbor, why is the probability of green tiles a fraction? Or as a decimal, why is it between 0 and 1? We're going to pause recording as students discuss this one. Why is it always going to be a fraction? Now that we've talked in class, why is it always going to be a fraction? Why is it always between 0 and 1? I should see more hands after a group discussion. We'll start with Luke, and then I'll start cold calling. Uh, possibly. Okay. Uh, not quite the right conclusion. You're trying to say that one is a whole number, so that whole number one means a whole experiment. Close, but not quite interpreting it correctly. So I would like to draw your attention to this up here on the board. The probability of green is the observed frequency out of the total number of trials. In order for this to be 1, interpret what that needs to be. What does that actually mean? Grant? Yeah, the observed frequency and the total number of trials are equal. So if we drew 18 total times, then those 18 times I would have had to have drawn a green every single time. So yes, a full experiment would need to be completed, but when that full experiment is completed, that full experiment resulted in every single tile representing green. Does that make sense, Luke? The decimal fraction? Okay. Okay. What would a zero mean? If this is supposed to equal zero, what would that mean? Um, let's go. Okay, a new hand. Thank you, Davin. Yeah, no greens in however many trials. So whether it's 12 trials or 30 trials, that would be no greens within those 12 trials. So why is the probability always going to be between zero and one? Could we ever draw a green less than zero times? No, so it can't be smaller than zero. Can we ever draw a green more times than we've drawn tiles? No, and so that's why it has to be between zero and one because we can't ever see something more times than we've possibly even experimented on it. That's why it has to be between that zero and that one. We will never have more observed than we've actually tried. Okay, if I know the probability of green, can I figure out the probability of blue? 
That's what question six is alluding to. If I know the probability of green for any one of my experiments, can I figure out the probability of blue? A few hands. We need to talk with our group, so we're going to pause the recording. All right. If I know the green probability, can I use that to help me figure out the probability of drawing a blue? Good. Some new hands this time. Thank you. Liv. Yeah, perfect, perfect explanation. So, for example, I had 25 out of 30 green. So if I have 25 out of 30 are green, what does that mean for the blue? Summarizing what Liv said, that means if 25 out of 30 were green, then how many had to be blue? Five of them. Unless there's a third color. Is there a third color, though? It's still possible, but it does get a little bit crazy. So the probability of green was 25 out of 30. That makes the probability of blue 5 out of 30. Um, I heard another conversation around the room talking about part-to-part -part ratios or part-to-whole ratios. When we know one part-to-whole ratio, we can convert it into the other part-to-whole ratio because both are parts of that same whole. So if I know one part, I can figure out what that other part is going to be. Based on all of this, what is your final prediction about green tiles? You can see your graph. You can see how that probability changes. But you can also see, at least mine, kind of settles in around a certain number. Some of you guys have it settling in at a certain number, the more draws. Some of you guys have interesting data. So put it all together. Make your prediction. Make your prediction now. We'll pause recording as students discuss to make their predictions. Uh, me personally, my prediction based on all of this data, as I talked about previously, I started with, uh, my prediction was 12 out of 12, then it changed to 11 out of 12, 9 to 10 out of 12, 11 out of 12, so I kind of bounced around a little bit, 12, 11, 9 or 10, 11, 10, so I feel confident saying it's probably 10 or 11. So that is going to be my prediction personally for my own data, is I predict there are 10 green tiles. I think that's a good balance of all the data. Okay, we're gonna pause the recording now. And when I actually dump out what was in my bag, this is what I see. I had two blue tiles and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 green tiles. Based on that information, it is now my job to calculate the theoretical probability. With the theoretical probability, what I'm really asking is there were 10 green. That's now the observed frequency. That's the 10 green out of the total number of tiles, which is 12 total tiles. So the probability of my of green in theory is still going to be listed as P of G is equal to, and I need to do that division, 10 divided by 12. Oh no, my calculator is dying. Okay, I have just enough juice left in these batteries to come up with 0 0.83 repeating. That's for me. Uh, groups in class have already calculated their theoretical probability as well. So one last time, well not one last time, we're going to pause the recording again. How does our experimental probability compare with a theoretical probability? And in your own words, once again, we started the lesson this way. What do you think experimental and theoretical probability means? Now we've done it. So in your own words again, there it is. What do you think experimental probability means? What do you think theoretical probability means? Well, that's what we're going to be discussing on this pause break. Ready, set, go. The question is, how did your group's experimental compare with a theoretical? My theoretical was 0 0.83. I'm actually going to go back to my graph so I can make that comparison. 0 0.83 repeating ends up being, let's see, about right here-ish. So how did my ex or theoretical compare to the experimental? My experimental is kind of surrounding the actual theoretical probability. That was not a perfectly straight line, but you guys get the idea. Find where yours is on the graph. How does it compare? 
Is it similar to my own? Whoever group this was, go and put your theoretical up on the board for me. Draw that same sort of line. And interesting, right? All of your data also surrounds your theoretical probability. Okay, uh, whoever this one was, go ahead and put your theoretical up there. And the next one, if you want to get ready and go put your theoretical up on the board as well. Yeah, very interesting. Yours was pretty much in line the whole time. You had one weird spike, it looks like. Pretty much in line the whole time. And the next group, you can get ready as well. You know who you are. Oh, interesting. That is very interesting. So you had half and half, six blue, six green. How interesting that that green, for the most part, hovered a little bit lower than that. Okay. And last group. Ooh. Um, okay. We are going to control Z. Don't try and use a ruler. Apparently that's not going to work. There we go. Okay. Very nice straight line. Um, we can see that the data for the most part on this one was below. One of them was accurate and one spike above it, but most of it was below. So very interesting. Um, based on that, what is experimental probability? What is theoretical probability? And are they always going to be exactly the same? Okay. Get me started on that discussion. Uh, Joshua. Yeah, based on actually doing it, based on experiments. Okay. Uh, what is the theoretical probability then? Grant. Yeah, it's based on calculations, exactly. It's based on calculations. And again, are they always going to match up perfectly every single time? No, that's the, what's interesting. We can come up with predictions based on the theory or the calculations, but the reality is it always going to be exactly that? No. Okay. And we've just got a final couple of questions. It says, place the theoretical probability of drawing green for each group in the class on the number line below. Um, let's see, I'm going to put mine, let's see, so 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.83 repeating, mine is going to be roughly there. Anyone else want to go up and put theirs up on the board? Just go. There's two pens, so two of you can go up there, put it up, pass the pen along. We're just going to keep the recording going as they do this. Hmm. Okay, good. I love how you stacked it on top since the one already exists there. Pause for one second. Pause. Control Z and lock this in place so that doesn't happen again. I'm sorry. Carry on. Stacking it on top again. Good. Okay. If the game was uh, draw out a green and you win, was this a fair game? No. No. It wasn't. Um, do you see how I gave myself the green bag? Yeah, that was not coincidental. I chose that bag on purpose. Just kidding. I really truly did not know. I just picked a bag at random of what was left. But that would be a fun way to do this, right? As the teacher, I design a game to where I win. Okay, uh, which groups are most likely to draw a green out of the bag? Which groups are most likely? Uh, Grant. Yeah, the groups that are towards the one. These ones are most likely to draw a green out of the bag. Which groups are the least likely to draw a green out of the bag? Uh, Dylan. Yeah, especially these ones, right? These ones might still have a fair chance, but especially these ones, these ones are definitely the least likely. Okay. 
As groups, let's discuss. Suppose you had to make a bag of 1,000 blue and green tiles. Okay, now it's 1,000 blue and green. It's not just 12, it's 1,000 in there. How many times do you think you would need to draw tiles to make an accurate prediction of the number of blue and green tiles actually in the bag? Think about when our, our experimental probability started to become accurate. How many times do you think we're actually going to have to perform this experiment if there's a thousand in the bag? Talk with your groups real quick. We'll pause the recording. Okay. Uh, what are your thoughts here, Sophie? Okay. Okay, let me let me rephrase the question. So yes, we did five different experiments. You're right. I think I should have rephrased it to how many times should I draw something out of the bag in order to make an accurate prediction instead of repeating it. Does that make sense? Okay, okay. Sorry for that confusion. Uh, what do you think? Uh, let's try Joshua. Five hundred to three hundred times. 500 to 3,000. Okay. 500 to 3,000. Why 500 to 3,000? Okay. Okay. So to summarize for the recording, you said we had 12 in the bag and we started with half of that number, so six. And then we went to about three times that number, 30. And so you're saying the same thing. We could go half, oh, one more page. We could go half the number of times or we could go about three times that amount in order to guess. Uh, pretty intense, right? That's a pretty intense experiments. Do you think even when I do those experiments, it's going to be accurate? Do you think we're going to be 100% accurate all of the time? Especially going back to the beginning when I only did it six times, I guessed 12. Was that accurate for mine? No. So are we ever going to be 100% accurate? Probably not. Um, last one, and this is going to be your homework because it is time to go. Um, number 14. You're a teacher in seventh grade math class and you want to create an experiment <clears throat> for your class that has red, yellow, and purple marbles in a bag. You want, <coughs> excuse me, you want the theoretical probability of drawing a red marble to be one fourth, the theoretical probability of drawing a yellow to be one fourth, and the theoretical probability of drawing a purple to be one half. You want 120 marbles in the bag. So how many red, yellow, and purple marbles? That is your homework. Number 15, I also want you to do this. You are comparing two fractions. Without using a calculator, you need to determine which is larger, greater than, less than, which symbol goes there. Any questions? Okay, that's your homework. Pausing the, or ending the recording. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.